I'm here by myself. I'm at the library by myself. Awesome, huh? My husband is with Annie right now, so I'm at the library. I have to go to the genealogy room to look up something, and then I have to go upstairs and maybe browse their books, you know, and see what new stuff they have. Um, let me get inside really quickly. This is one of my favorite places to go, and it's always important to have a hobby that you enjoy doing, you know, because it can get so stressful having kids, and it can get so stressful having special needs kids in general that it just, you need to make sure you have something that relaxes you, like a, a reliable, fun hobby. And I'm going to go upstairs first. But it's always just nice to have something that relaxes you and de-stresses you and... Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go in now, so I have to be quiet. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Alright guys, I'm sitting in the car pickup lane. Um, I did what I had to do at the library. I went and picked up a book and a couple of DVDs. Um, and I also went down to the genealogical department. I meant to record in there, but I was kind of in a rush and I lost track of time. Because if, if I'm in a library, I'm going to lose track of time anyway. Especially if I'm around historical documents and historical books. You can just forget it. I'm going to get lost. I'm not going to pay attention to time. And I'm going to be in a rush when I realize that I've just lost like an, a freaking half hour. But um, the book that I found in the library, I found a really funny book and it's like right up my alley I'm not even kidding it's called the maker's guide to the zombie apocalypse and it talks about um, different defense strategies and how you can make homemade alarms and it's kind of like um, a serious book with like a humorous twist to it this is what it looks like if you can find this it's awesome um, it tells you how to make um, defense systems from car batteries and even disposable cameras. That is freaking cool. I'm gonna have to go through it um, once I get home. And then I also picked up these DVDs, the Emily of New Moon DVDs. If you don't know what Emily of New Moon is, these books are absolutely wonderful and they're wit they are written by the same Arthur who wrote the Anne of Green Gable series, which I completely adored growing up. And I, I have I have I know I had the, the the Emily of New Moon books too as well because my aunt when I was little she would buy me not only the Anne of Green Gables books but also the Emily of New Moon books. And when I saw the DVDs I'm like, holy cow, I have to share these with my kids because my kids actually read some of the Anna Great Gables novels too. But that is freaking awesome to me. Um, anyway, I went down to the genealogical, or genealogical, the, the genealogy department, which is just below the main library. And um, I had to go because I'm trying to piece together um, a potential link between a couple of surnames that I keep seeing over and over here to my father's surname and it's not it's not far off it's it's by it's off by one letter and you turn that letter around and you have my father's surname completely and um and then that chain and then that name was also changed not once but twice so tracking my father's family has been, it's not very difficult. We actually have records from North Carolina from maybe the early 1700s and then it gets kind of iffy. Um, I know starts out in Maine. I know that's where we originated in the U.S. was in Maine. Um, beyond that it's England but there's a huge gap in between 
Maine records and England records. It's like the 1600s you can find this there. In Maine, no problem. But you can't find this in England after that until maybe like the, the, the 1400s you can find the surname just fine. So there's a huge gap and I don't know if records are lost or destroyed or okay there's somebody walking past my car anybody else do that you see somebody what well, you see somebody walking past your car and you kind of have to watch because you get kind of nervous but um so it's been kind of tricky to trace and I know from the DNA that I took I do have main ancestry because I met several people from Maine who are looking for the exact same lineage as I am so it, it's like the exact same person keeps appearing and if you do anything with my ancestry or my father's ancestry then you know the one main person that we're talking about that landed in this country and we all have that one link um so that's been a challenge and then I keep noticing a variation of that surname on this side of the state which is really weird because we're not from this side of the state at all it's just trying to establish that connection of how was that family here or why is that family here and I, I want to say maybe it's because of the Civil War I'm not sure that one theory that I'm working on um, a lot of my family took off during the Civil War um, and actually wound up in Tennessee in western part of the state. I, I don't know. I'm just trying to establish this connection in this family. I might be wrong. I don't know. But that's the whole fun of doing this. It's awesome. And um, I also went and got a small coffee because I need a little kick of caffeine today. I went and got this because this place was hiring. And I was kind of scoping it out because it, it, it it's always good to, just to kind of keep your feelers out there who's hiring in your neighborhood and your town and I put in my application in just to see what happens each time my husband comes home for the season I'm always putting my application in somewhere just to kind of make a little bit of extra money and they were busy I mean they look pretty short staffed staffed shat staffed they look pretty short and this coffee tastes like crap it tastes like coffee flavored water it tastes more water than you do the coffee it's very weak and very diluted it was only like a dollar and some it's like pocket change but still it's uh, it's pretty bad but <clears throat> I hate resorting I, 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 a while ago I swore off ever applying to restaurants ever again because I just don't think I have the patience for it anymore I did it for so long and it's getting to the point where I feel like I'm selling myself completely out now that's not I'm not bashing the the, the food industry at all I did it for so long believe me I know what it entails but I, I feel like I just don't have the patience for it anymore but it's all that's all that's hiring in this part of town is fast food or restaurants or something to do with the food industry and it gets it gets frustrating because you know you're capable of so much more but on paper that's all the experience you have because that's all that's all your neighborhood and your town has to offer but, I mean, it's, it gets frustrating. But I, I have so many other skills and so many other experiences that I just, I mean, I'll do it if I have to. Don't get me wrong. But it's not what I want to do. What I want to do actually entails money. Money that we don't have. Money that I need to actually get the equipment that we need to do what we want to do and so forth I'm pretty sure you guys have been through this or I've heard this talk before but um and my husband also keeps his feelers out too when he's home 
because if there's anything local that he can do work-wise, and he has tons of experience in just about anything, he's like a jack-of-all-trades kind of guy. So if there's anything that he can do locally, he'll take the job because it's um it's it's getting to the point where we're kind of deciding if he wants to go back over the road or if he wants to work locally and each time he comes home he keeps his eyes out for something locally but if if nothing pops up then he goes back to work over the road but if something pops up then he'll stay home but then again we don't want to be put in a financial bind either but um we're just kind of just kind of keeping our, our, our feelers out but we also have to work around the kids' schedules and my schedule too because um who's gonna like he can't work a midnight job he can't get up like at one o'clock and two o'clock and go to work because i gotta take the kids to school you know at seven eight in the morning you know that that's just not gonna be feasible for us and it Everybody keeps suggesting like different jobs and their work and stuff like that. Their, fa their family dynamic is totally different from ours. I mean, we have two special needs kids in the house. One um, is doing fairly well. One is on the road to doing fairly well, but she still has therapy different days there in the week and um, early intervention services that she's still going through. And I don't think anybody takes those things into consideration when, um, you know implying you know come work for us because we'll take care of you no you won't because the first thing you're going to do you're going to complain when we have to take off for 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 our daughter's therapy you know it just doesn't make sense so i'm trying to find we're just at least keep our eyes out for something that works around our schedule and our family and something that just is gonna work for us because not every job is gonna work for the same person so maybe I don't know maybe we'll find something maybe we won't and if we won't then oh well there's always you know work again in March but um, that sort of thing but see if we can find something that I can work night shift and he can work during the day and I'm available to take the kids to school and pick them up and then go to work. That'd be awesome. But those kinds of shifts are really hard pressed to be found around here. I mean, it gets to the point where you one person in the household has to work and the other one can't work because you have, you know, kids and other stuff to think about. Now, see, I can go back to work full time in August when Annie starts school full time. That won't be an issue it's just from now to august you know it's like a, a, a five a five and a half month gap so whew. but anyway um like i said if nothing comes up then we still have um his job offer and to return to work in march if he wants to so that's i mean it's, it's just getting to the point where we're not, just not sure if it's worth it anymore that's all I mean, it's no big deal. I mean, my husband is the type of man that does what he has to do. He's not going to, you know, up and quit his job without a back <laughs> up. Um, we just have too much going on and to, to think about. But um, if he gets a job here, then I'll get a job. We're maybe working part-time or weekends or nights or something just to kind of help fund. Because, see, the thing is, he'll take... A bit of a pay cut if he stays home because I don't think he's gonna find something that pays what he makes now and it's just I don't know we'll work something out we always do um my kids are actually almost out and I have to I'm, I'm gonna actually go through this book right now um it looks pretty funny but I will see you guys soon. Oh, wait, tomorrow. Tomorrow we have to finally go file our, 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 our taxes. We, we've been putting it off. Not, be, not, not putting it off on purpose. We just get so busy. It's really hard to stay on top of things. But we're going to go file our taxes. And then we're going to... I want to go shopping at Aldi's. Because everybody swears Aldi's is cheaper. And they've actually improved. Supposedly. I don't know. I'll check it out 
tomorrow so you guys will probably see an oldies haul tomorrow or Thursday anyway um hope you guys are having an awesome weekend I'm um, weekend I'm ahead it's Tuesday my mind wants to say weekend hope you guys are having an awesome day and I will see you guys tomorrow bye